inspired. It means to breathe into. Respiratory means breathe into. Uh -huh. while, while we have expired, which also now has another meaning, meaning breathing out. They'll say, when I was taking my test, it says, breathe out. When I say breathe in, so I've got I got halfway through that machine with a sketch and now breathe out. How do you breathe out? Now breathe in. Hold it for 20 seconds. Have you yes, ever tried to hold your breath for 20 seconds? It seemed yeah. like it was an hour. I know. When can I and if I if I breathe out too fast, then I'm gonna have to go through this whole operation again. <laughs> breathe out, breathe in. So respiratory means to be inspired. It breathes in. God is breathing in to us His Word and those things that are in it. For centuries, the Word was understood then the, 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 was, was, was understood to refer to both the divine origin and the divine nature currently in Scripture. In other words, what I'm trying to say is we all believe that the Word of God is inspired by God. We all believe that God inspired writers to write the Word of God. We got that. But the new idea is, that I want you to understand is, it's still being inspired to us today. The same inspiration that God gave Paul to write it, that inspiration was put into the Word of God when we read it, it, it breathes into us the life of God as Christians. He's living out His life in me. It is not my... Uh, uh, one other, let's look at... We need to quit. Galatians, look at Galatians 2.20. Here's what I'm trying to say. Galatians 2.20. When you become a Christian, in Galatians 2.20... Cynthia, my Bible's marked up more than yours. Yeah, you're in it more than I am. <laughs> there you go. Galatians 2.20. That's going to change, isn't it? Galatians yes, it is. Thank you. Galatians 2.20. I, you got it? Highlight it. Mark it. Circle it. I am crucified with Christ. I have, in other words, we've been looking in Romans. When Christ died on the cross, we died with Him. We've become a Christian. As Christ died on the cross to pay for our sins, we became part of Christ. Nevertheless, I live. When I became a Christian, when I became a Christian, I'm still alive. I'm still who I am. I'm still, I'm, I'm still the person I was the day before. I'm still saved, but I'm still who I you know, always was and have been. Yet, notice it's not I. I live, yet not I. I'm living, this is, but I'm, I, I'm not, it's not I. It's, it is, but, what is it? Christ what? Liveth in me. Christ lives in me. Right. That's kind of scary, isn't it? He, I mean, he lives in me through the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the life which I now live in the flesh, meaning this, I, I, this, we're here. This is flesh. I live in this body of flesh. That's right. I live by faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Here's what I want to say. When I became a Christian, I lived in this, I had the same body. The only difference is Christ came to live in me. The Holy Spirit came and he lives in me. So it's not I that live, it's Christ that lives in me. Right. Yeah. Now wait a minute. Who's living in you, me or you? My wife says, is it you or Christ living in you today? Is that Christ or is that you? <laughs> now sometimes I am dominant. There's sometimes Christ is dominant. I just wish Christ was more dominant than I sometimes. I wish the power of Christ in me was more dominant than the dominant of my own nature sometimes. But more and more as I live for Christ, 
let him live in me, meaning the more I understand, the more that I allow Christ to get in me. Someone said in our church back home, she says, I took my, I took my husband. He's becoming more like you all the time. I said, how's that? He says, he listens to you preach and he keeps wanting to do everything you say. <laughs> well, you know, uh, that could be a problem, huh? That means you you have to stop going to the, you have to stop going to the bars, right? Uh, that means you I mean that means you've got to come to church on Sunday night and Wednesday night, huh? He's messing up my social life. He wants he, he's beginning to think like you do. Should we not begin to think more like Christ thinks? Shouldn't His life be in my life? He's, he, by the way, if you're a Christian, He is in your life. Make him a part of your life. Right. Yeah. He is in your life. There are some people who are in your life that you just wish would get out of your life. You know? One person you don't want to get out of your life is Christ. Right. You want him to be dominant. You want him to be thinking through your mind. And how he does that is for you to get into your mind what Christ is saying. And that's a pain, you know? I mean, really, it is when somebody, someone says, you know what the Bible says? Darn, yes, I know. Oh, God, why'd you have to bring that up for? <laughs> it's like some of my friends that I knew that went to school with asked me if I had a Roman road, and I'm like, uh. I've never been down the Roman road. Oh, the Bible. Okay, I've never been to Rome, so I have never been down that road. <laughs> 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 I, actually, oh, I actually have it highlighted in my Bible. Uh, oh, that's, <laughs> I can see Cynthia's got a long ways to go, wait, man. Let's pray. Father, we are thankful for your grace and goodness and for your fellowship today. Lord, we cannot bring understanding to the hearts of our people only that you can translate what we're even trying to say and make it simple to their own lives. We give you thanks for that. Thank you for the fellowship we've had today in your word. And we'll give you thanks in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Of that cord. There's, there's, there's Dick and Jimmy. Oh, Charles does. And Elder, and Elder uh, Johnny. Who's about to get screened, I think. You're going to run right into the screen. Uh,